Hi, it's Vicky here and welcome back to the fifth week of my Christmas Art Journal series. Today I'm going to play with this tie. This is by Sizzix and it gives you these two guys along with a lamppost. I think that this is absolutely adorable. The moment I saw it, I knew I wanted to make it into an art journal. Now you can see that the size is quite big, so it would make a nice focal point for an art journal layout, double page, in a book. However, for today, I decided to work on a 6x6 six six page, and I'm going to show you a few examples. I have a couple of um, Christmas ones that I did last year. These are 6x6. Six six. These are not punched on the side, so I can easily frame them. However, whenever I want to bind them together into a book, I can always use the disc bound system. And here you can see a few of my examples. Now, the fun part about working on a 6x6 page is that it's not too big, which means that it's not overwhelming. Smaller uh, dies and stamps fit nicely as a focal point. I find this size is really fun, especially when I don't want to spend too much time covering up a double page. But of course, if you want to turn my idea today into a double page inside the book, it's really easy to modify. So for these pages, I like to start with thick watercolor paper. And I have some here. This is by Arteza and you will find it linked below. I'm going to play with my new Deckel trimmer. This is a new paper trimmer by Tim Holtz. When you cut paper with this trimmer, it's going to give you a very interesting looking edge. It's really vintage looking and authentic. And I absolutely love it just because I love uh, vintage looking projects. If you are a fan of them, I'm sure you're going to have lots of fun playing with this Decla trimmer. I am cutting my paper to be 5x5, five five, which means that it is slightly smaller than my actual page, which is going to be 6x6, six six, the finished project. However, I am planning to do some layers, that's why I am starting with a smaller one. Now here I zoomed in for you, so you can see better the edge that I got. If you love layering papers and creating vintage uh, projects, then this is a lovely detail that really makes a difference. For my background, I'm going to play with a smooshing technique, and for that, I'm going to work on the non-stick uh, mat. This came along with the glass mat, and I'm going to start with a pale blue ink for my background. That's Speckletech Distress Ink. I'm going to spray a little bit of water, and once I see a few bubbles here and there, I'm going to apply my paper on top, making sure that I don't cover up the whole area, mainly staying at the top. With this technique you get a really interesting background that doesn't look flat, you can see splashes, areas that are darker and others that are lighter. I'm going to make sure that this first layer is completely dry and then I'm going to dip it on what's left on my craft mat one more time. Always drying in between before I move on to the next step. Now I'm repeating the same process, this time with a slightly darker ink and that's broken china. Again the same thing, smooshing a little bit of ink, then applying that color on top, mainly staying at the very top now, so I don't go as further down as I did with the previous color. And again I'm going to dry this layer before I move on to the next step. Now I will use the darker of the blue shades that I picked for today, which is faded jeans, again repeating the exact same process, but mainly focusing on the very top of my uh, paper as well as on the edges. And again, just like always, I'm going to use my heat gun to make sure that this layer is completely dry. Ok, one more layer and this is walnut stain, just a touch of brown since I am going for a vintage look. I am not going to add too much, you can see I just smoothed a little bit and I'm not going to dab it all over the place, just in a few areas here and there to give that old look. And here is a close up look where you can see the background better, I'm just inking up the edges with walnut stain again. Then all I did was spray water over the edges which is going to allow that brown ink to bleed towards the page. It's going to give a really lovely look and you can probably see how it bleeds at the moment. And now let's work at the bottom of the page. Now I'm using thick gesso and I'm going to apply it with a brayer. The idea is to have white area at the bottom which is going to look as snow and blue at the top which is going to look as my sky. So I want to add the um, white at the bottom fading out to blue. I'm starting with the brayer applying light uh, layers of gesso. 
If you do have some splashes or uh, brown and blue at the bottom, it's not the end of the world. Don't try to cover them up completely. After all, there is always some dirt in between the snow. Now, as I move on, I pick up uh, more gesso and apply it thicker at the bottom. This is going to give a very interesting texture and you see a close-up photo of the finished project here so you can tell exactly what I'm talking about. To add more interest on my background, I'm going to use one of my go-to methods. I'm using a text stamp and I'm going to stamp here and there. For that, I'm using um, an archival ink and that's uh, faded jeans. I wanted to go with a blue ink so that it blends better with the background. You can still see that it is there, but um, I didn't want it to be black as it would be really vibrant. Now, I'm not going to stamp at all at the bottom since this is going to be the snow and I'm going to keep it nice and clean. Now let's do some stenciling and I'm going for a really fun technique. I'm going to use this stencil that has bigger and smaller snowflakes and uh, instead of uh, using a bossing paste, I'm going to go with transfer gel. So this is glue in a paste form. It's quite thick. You apply it with a spatula and you can see it looks milky white, but it's going to dry completely clear. I'm going to pick a few of the snowflakes and apply transfer gel over them. And when this transfer gel dries, it uh, becomes clear so you know that it is ready and it's still sticky, which means that you can apply on top foil and it actually provides a way to apply foil on top of your projects without using heat. So I'm going to add a couple of more uh, snowflakes here and there. You can see a close-up look here. This is the transfer gel that looks white, so it's not ready yet. I'm going to leave it aside to dry and we'll come back to it later on. In the meanwhile, I'm going to work on my focal points and all the little parts that you need for the girl are in one die, as well as the same for the guy. And it's the same thing for the trees as well. So I'm going for a red coat for the girl, a dark blue coat for the guy, and I have all the pieces die cut here and ready to put together. If you take a close-up look, you will find that there are some um, uh, scoring lines on the die cut pieces, so you know exactly where you are supposed to stick the hand. I cut out the guy once from uh, dark navy blue cardstock so that I can uh, cut out bits and pieces like his coat for example and um, I did cut him out one more time out of craft cardstock. This is going to be the base where I'm going to stick everything together and of course it's going to be the flesh as well. I'm using my Nouveau Deluxe glue to stick everything together and of course my handy little embellishment wand which really makes a difference when you have to fight with tiny little pieces. Now if you look at uh, the top of my screen you will see the little guy who is ready to go. I did use a brown for his uh, hat, his scarf as well as his pants and black to die cut his shoes and the hair. For the little girl, I went with brown for her hair and I'm going with um, red for her coat. Of course, I'm chopping out the legs and uh, the hands so that I can stick that on top of the base. And again, I'm using craft as the base here. And now for the legs, I'm going to use the red ones and I'm going to chop them just a little bit shorter so that when I stick them on top of the base, they are going to look like red boots. And there is one more piece for her that works as a scarf. I'm going to die cut that from a silver cardstock and I do have accents of silver all over the place. You will see how everything is going to come together later on. Now for the tree, I'm going to stick the green one on top of the brown one. So I end up having that tree trunk at the bottom. And here are the little uh, details for the tree, which are cut out from silver cardstock. And now for the lamppost, I did cut it out from black cardstock, but for the top, I did cut out tiny little pieces of silver, which I put together, so you can see it's quite shiny. If you notice that my background, the snowflakes are now transparent, which means that uh, the paste is dry, and it's time to apply the flakes. I'm going to work with Nouveau Gilding Flakes in silver. But of course you can work with a foil roll if you like. I just love the look and I'm going with the flakes for today. I'm going to work inside the box and that's because the flakes can be really messy. They can go all over the place. So it's nice to have a good container. 
to hold all the mess and at the same time you don't have to throw everything away, you can put them back in the jar. I'm making sure that I cover up all the snowflakes with my silver flakes and then with a stiff brush I'm going to rub all over the snowflake and you will see that uh, those silver flakes stick only where that uh, glue was. It's a really fun technique to add sparkle on any project and there is a huge variety of colors in the market of flakes as well as foil roll to play with. Every time I'm going for a vintage looking uh, project I always like to ink up the edges with a little bit of brown. For that my favorite is a uh, vintage photo and it is uh, the most used distress ink that I have in my craft room. Now I'm going to put together the die cut pieces. So the guy is holding the tree and then I'm going to stick the girl on top and notice that they are holding hands. This is a great focal point for a card as well and um, you can play with different colors for their clothes or even use pattern paper to have some designs there. And now finally it's time to put everything together. For the lamppost I do have glue at the bottom but a tiny little foam square at the top so it does stay a little bit dimensional. And for my people I will do the same thing, so for the legs I'm going to use glue so they are going to lay flat at the bottom on the snow, but at the top I'm going to use foam squares so they are going to be a little bit popped on my project. Now all you have to do is to add a quote, you can stamp on top of that if you like, I decided to go with stickers and I do have this uh, Christmas stickers booklet by Tim Hodge, this is from uh, last year, probably it is still available. I picked three of them and I like to play with different sizes. I audition them and try to find what looks best. I'm also going to play with a few of those uh, glitter um, washi tapes that I had uh, uh, collecting throughout the years. And since I have silver snowflakes, a silver uh, uh, accent on my lamppost as well as silver accents on her scarf and the tree, I think that adding a little bit of silver on the um, underneath the sticker quote is going to bring everything together. And when I have silver accents all over the place, I like to use my tiny attacher. It adds an extra texture and I did use that a few times on uh, my sentiment. And now it's time to add the highlights. With my gel pen, I'm going to add a few on the lamppost as well as on the tree and on the people. The white pen that I'm working with at the moment is a jelly roll and the fun part about using a jelly roll is that it doesn't dry permanent. So if you don't like a highlight that you added in an area, you can always wipe it off with a baby wipe really easily. Or you can see I'm smudging it with my finger. And now it's time to create my 6x6 page since I was going for a 6x6 project in the beginning. I do have a pattern paper here that uh, looks quite old and I absolutely love that. This is slightly bigger than the 5x5 five five, uh, project that I already have. And I did use the decal edge paper trimmer to cut it out so you will see that it has the same uh, interesting edges as the main project. I'm going to stick one on top of the other but making sure that they are on an angle. And I did use foam squares in between so there is a little bit of dimension. And finally I'm going to stick the whole thing with my glue on top of a 6x6 black cardstock. This is going to provide a lovely frame. And as I stick it down I make sure that the main image is completely straight when you compare it with the black cardstock. And if you follow my art journal journey, you already know what's the last step. So I need to add some white splashes. These are going to work as snow. I did cover up the faces because I don't want to have any funny splotches all over their face. It's going to look funny otherwise. And um, I am going to use this uh, lovely brush that adds really fine splashes. And with gesso that I have watered down, I'm going to apply it all over the place. If you don't like the look, you can just omit that. It's not a necessary step, but I like how you get white splashes at the back where the black cardstock is, so it kind of binds all those different layers together. And that was the project for today. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired. I can't believe that we are already in week 5 of my Art Journal Christmas journey, and we have only 3 more to go. Just like always, you will find a list of all the supplies that I used for this project down below in the description area as well as on my blog. Thank you all so much for spending some time with me today and I'll see you all next time.